Are we live? We are live. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the White Army Comprehensive Clinical Class. Today, the White Army is privileged to have Professor Y K Amdekar Sir, Medical Director, Badia Hospital, Mumbai, and Dr. Rajesh Udani Sir. pediatric neurologist pd hinduja hospital mumbai as our mentors today we are honored to have you all both with us here today very, very warm welcome to you um dr ashray s patel uh, first year md pediatrics from bmcri bengaluru has volunteered to present a clinical case on neuromuscular disorder today a warm welcome to you sir i welcome all the attendees to the session without Uh, further ado with our mentors permission we shall uh, begin the session shall we start sir yep okay over to uh, you dr ashwin good evening uh, mentors and all the participants so can we start with the presentation yes yes so today i am presenting a case of a 7 year old boy name xyz Uh, second born to non consanguineous married couple hailing from bangalore and informant being mother and reliable with chief complaints being difficulty in getting up from sitting position from 2 years of age difficulty in walking from 2 years of age difficulty in climbing stairs from 2 years of age and repeated history of falls from 3 years of age child was apparently normal till 2 years of age when the mother noticed difficulty in getting up from sitting position it was insidious in onset gradually progressive initially he used to take help from his parents to get up from floor later mother noticed that he used to bend forward to pull up the hip then used to keep one hand on the floor and other hand on the leg and then used to put both the legs on the knee and then get up then mother noticed difficulty in walking from 2 years of age which was gradually progressive initially used to walk with legs apart and used to sway on one side while walking later on it progressed and mother tells that he started to walk on his toes mother also complains that child is having difficulty in climbing stairs initially he used to climb up stairs with two feet per step but never could climb with alternate feet later he was unable to lift the tie and lift the tie and used to do that with the help of his hands to keep the legs up then used to hold on to the side rails to climb up and downstairs also used to go with assistance then mother also gives history of uh, child having repeated falls from 3 years of age mother also complains of wasting of thigh muscles there was no history of difficulty in wearing slippers or frequent loosening of slippers while walking uh, there was no difficulty in lifting hand above the sh- shoulder or combing hair there was no difficulty in holding on to objects no difficulty with buttoning or unbuttoning the shirt no history of difficulty in lifting head from the bed no difficulty from of sitting from lying down posture no history of regurgitation of food no history of difficulty in swallowing or drooping of eyelids present uh, no history of difficulty in chewing the food or no history of uh, loss of cold or hot sensation present no history of loss of pain sensation present bowel and bladder movements were normal uh, no history of any joint pain present and the symptoms which he had there was no waxing and waning of the symptoms or any demonstrable fatigability no history of pain in the muscle there was no history of fasciculations no history of decreased vision or difficulty in relaxing hand grip no history of cramps were present no history of palpation running heartbeat breathlessness or swelling of limbs noticed Uh, coming to the past history, not a known case of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, or TB. Uh, in a wellness visit, he was not. He did not visit for any regular uh, follow-up after his birth, or he did not go for his immunization schedules as well. Illness visits, he used to get upper respiratory tract infection usually two to three times per year, and he used to visit local clinic in view of the same, as well as for the above complaints. antenatal history second born child to non consanguineous married couple pregnancy detected by upt at 3 months of age no antenatal scans were done no iron folate or calcium supplements were taken and pt was not administered there was no history of reduced fetal movements no history of fever or burning maturation 
no history of exposure to drug or radiation and no history suggestive of pregnancy induced hypertension gestational diabetes mellitus or any chronic maternal illness no history of leaking or bleeding pv or foul smelling discharge or uh, premature rupture of membranes present uh, birth history home delivered child by normal vaginal delivery at 39 weeks period of gestation and baby uh, the child cried immediately after birth uh, weight of the child mother is not aware full term crying immediately after birth breastfeeding started within 30 minutes after delivery uh, it was adequately done on demand day and night and no feeding problems was noted uh, no respiratory difficult jaundice cyanosis or seizures noted coming to the developmental history gross motor neck holding was attained at 7 months rolling over attained at 7 months uh, child used to sit with support at 10 months stands with support at 1 year uh, stands without support creeps well and walks but with falls at 13 months walk he used to walk without support at 15 months he could run at around 18 months walks upstairs and downstairs two feet per step attained at 2 years but he could never uh, Wow, climb upstairs or downstairs with alternate feet. Uh, fine motor was appropriate for age. Language and social milestones as well were appropriate for age. A uh, child was not put to school due to the issues he is facing. Vision and hearing was normal. Uh, so, inference there was delayed gross motor milestones. Immunization history: he child was not immunized. at all uh dietary history so but he there was 11% uh, deficit in calories and protein consumed was adequate family history there was no history of any similar complaint in the family the and no members used to use wheelchair or had any skeletal or spinal uh, spinal deformity or any functional limitation as such this is the pedigree chart of four children with the first child uh, uh, there was death of first child at around 2 months of age uh, history of preterm delivery was present in the child and the child had fever and before they could take the child to the hospital the death of the child had taken place second child this is the second child 7 years old and the uh, other two children are alive and healthy social economic status belongs to upper lower social economic status Summary. Uh, don't summarize. Years. Don't summarize. I think yes. go get back to your first slide. Yes. I think we haven't heard the origin of this problem. You said it started two years ago. Did it start acutely? Was it noticed over time? Uh, so it started it was noticed over time sir so over how long time do we have any idea for example so was the child absolutely normal prior to that uh, you said he was walking and standing without support etc now how was he walking was there any effort made to find out whether his walk was normal or not Sir, according to the mother, up till two years he was normal. Sir, rather than the attainment of gross milestones which were delayed, mother said the rest of the things were normal. Sir, only after two years she started to complain about the these things. Okay. Uh, what I thought was that all first three things can't come just together, and there could have been some time over which all these things slowly came up. But the point is that if you were at that time, what would have been your thought process at the age of two years? Yes, sir. It could have come over time, sir. Initially, there would have been difficulty in getting up. Then slowly, walking would have been involved, sir. Over time, each symptom would have developed. Was there any pain? No sir, no pain was noticed, sir. Child never used to cry, or later okay. on also sir. she he didn't complain of any pain, sir. All right. So what was your thoughts? So there is the possible. Yeah. Go ahead, Rajesh. Go on, go on. 
No, what was the possible? Well, Dr. Amdekar asked a very relevant question. Suppose you had seen him at the age of two years. Yes. Uh, initially, when he had come with this difficulty and he was the first doctor to evaluate, what would the thoughts have been? I mean, what do you think is, been, is going on? Can you tell us what you, you think? Without so when, examination, just from the history. Just from the history, we can think that uh, proximal muscles of the lower limbs are... Okay, involved. so that's when, when you're talking about... Uh, before that, uh, what do you think is the... When is the onset of the illness, you think? Onset of the illness, according to the history, it is at the level of the muscles. Sir. No, no, I'm saying that... No, no, no. Onset doesn't mean, I'm not saying where is the region, I'm saying when do you think the problem has started? In the sense, from your history, the first two, three slides, so the you talk act. about the history, so you can go to the next slide also. Yes, you sir. given some details and all that, then you gave some history about development and all that, so yes. your, whenever, you're, whenever, you're, whenever you're trying to uh, you know, decipher histories, Besides where and what and all that, you also want to know when it started because it's very important, the age of onset of disease. So, it so have, wait, when it do you think this started? At birth only, sir, because there was delay in neck holding as well. So, right. from so, the uh, birth only to insidiously it would have started, sir, to okay. involve. And, and what do you think was involved? Only, was it a... I mean, what, 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 from the development, what was your assessment? When you, have a, developmental, next... when you have a developmental delay, uh, how would you decide which particular system is involved? Is it the brain, spinal cord? Is it, you know, muscle? The neck flexors of the neck was involved, sir. So mostly muscle was involved, sir. You said neck, neck was not, was normal, right? Go to the next page. I, I thought that he was late in holding his head and neck, but the rest of the milestones went all right. So it yes, must have been a large head. And I think my thought process is on hydrocephalus. And now you have an upper motor neuron lesion coming up in the lower limb because of a slowly progressive hydrocephalus. Yes, so that also can be a chance. So that's the first possibility because the head was large. The child could not hold his head like neck. Yes, sir. That also could have been possible, sir. But can, can, you, you, can, you, can you simply rule that out? Rule that out? Uh, we could have asked the mother regarding the size of the head, sir. Whether it was proportionate with the body or uh, not. Okay. Can you just send us the... The direct questions you asked, there were lots of them, so it was a bit difficult to follow each question. So can you just go to that? Yes, sir. HOPS. You asked direct questions. Initially, of course, you took the history of the presenting illness, which is good. You told us exactly how the mother had felt. Yes, sir. Okay, now go to the direct questions. So this was so, the I mean, in, in, Before we go to the direct questions, this is saying normal till two years. And insidious, progressive, and initially you should take help, and later on you started falling, and had some difficulty in walking. Next page, okay. Okay. Ah. Ah. Yes, sir. No. When you said no difficulty in lifting head from bed, which muscle do you think is involved in that? Sir, no history. Flexors of the neck. But you just told me the flexor of the head, neck were weak. Yes, sir. But later on... No, no, no. no, no. So I'm saying from the history, according to you, uh, this is a point against muscle disease, right? Uh, yes, sir. But I mean, I'm just saying, what I'm saying is that uh, your history is good, but maybe we should just uh, understand what the mother can, uh, what, what, what are the mother's impressions on direct questioning? When direct questioning is, for example, go to the next page. Yes. Sir. Over here you mentioned 
no loss of prick sensation. How did you ask that history? The pain no sensation. Loss, no history of loss of cold or hot. How do you ask that history? Sir, uh, when he takes bath with the hot water, whether the child is able to know that it, it is hot water or not. Okay. Yes. That's good. And the uh, uh, prick sensation? The pain sensation, sir, that was. Sorry, sir. No issue no, of loss of but pain sensation in the sense uh, you asked him when he got hurt, when he would cry and all that kind of thing. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Go to the next page. And this, you know, when you when you ask things like no history of fasciculation, how do you ask a history like that? Sir, in whether there was any involuntary contraction and relaxation of the muscle, whether there was any no, involuntary... no, I understand. I understand. You know that well, fasciculation may look like muscle twitches, but the point is that uh, these are these are really things which are important from uh, the point of view of examination. It's very difficult to trust a mother who yes. you know, that to 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 examine the child through the mother, for example palpitations, running heartbeat. I mean, those are the mother will, if you are, you're trying to say that there is a problem in the heart, there's no problem in the heart, correct? Yes. So when, you, when you're asking for that kind of, you only ask for symptoms of heart disease. So swelling of the limbs and breathlessness is fine. And if you yes. ask for a fasciculation, what did you ask actually? You said something about muscle contraction, relaxation. Yes. Sir. Whether there was any... Fasciculation real? Involuntary movement of the tongue muscles are involved, or any distal yeah, muscles. See, yes. see what what we are trying to say is that even on examination, sometimes it may not be easy. But history, it is impossible to get that. Yeah, so impossible. Take that away. Take that away. Yeah. Yes, sir, yes, true, sir. And uh, it has been included in the examination. And the, what is the history of joint pain got to do with uh, you know everything is coming together? You understand your history is good is extremely complete i must say but you know your history your direct questions you should always give less importance to you know the, the, okay. the main thing is what the witness pain was to rule out any if it no, was no, any no, let, let, me finish, cause. Let, me, let me finish let me finish so what you do is you try to i'm not i'm not not, I'm not criticizing your history i'm just saying to make it yes. more initially in your thoughts you said there was some neuromuscular problem correct Yes, sir. But then you don't bring in things like decreased vision and joint pains because those things are not generally part of the neuromuscular. So I can understand if you put pain, there's one thing, there was no history of pain anywhere. Okay, because if you thought maybe this is caused by joint involvement or whatever. It is. But in, in, try to sort of bring your questions together regarding where the lesion is and then what is the etiology of the lesion. So you want to exclude, yes, but I mean, so decreased vision has come between cramps and fasciculation. <laughs> so what were you thinking of about decreased vision? Is, is you know, difficulty in reducing hand drip? Relaxing, sir, myotonia. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So myotonia, that, that, but I mean, <laughs> how does myotonia normally present? Now that you it, asked, you said myotonia, how does so the mother is, usually uh, tell you? Able to, if he's if you ask him to remove a cap, bottle cap, he will be in that same position. Or if he's any extremely cold object, if he holds on to it, he'll not be able to leave. No, but, but, the... From the mother's point of view, it's a very specific uh, problem. No? Myotonia, if mother is not going to notice things like, uh, you know, that his hand is not opening fast and slow and all this kind of thing. Yes. So how Should does have... the mother come to know? Mother comes to know the usual story is the child sits and is after prolonged sitting because myotonia means difficulty in relaxation of muscles. When you sit for a long time, maybe more in cold weather, but any there are many conditions other than uh, uh, cold induced myotonia where you can get myotonia. So they have a problem initially to move because the muscles are contracted and they can't relax. And then as the muscles relax, they start walking better. You know, so that's what I'm saying. So your histories are very different 
from what you are thinking and what the mother will experience. Do you understand what I'm yes. saying? Yes, 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 a true. Sir. So any points? Anything else you want to, sir? Okay, many because... times, many times the no history runs in a long pages. Okay, yeah. that's the point we are making. That your no history should be related to your primary thought, where the lesion is likely to be, what type of lesion, and more important to me is which parents may forget to talk about. That means they thought it was a minor event and therefore they did not talk. So from that point of view. I think no history can be cut down to a large extent. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, where is your lesion really? You you think it's a lower motor neuron lesion? Yes, sir. Mainly lower motor neuron, lower motor neuron lesion, sir. In lower motor neuron, mainly the muscles, sir. So it can form anterior cell can get involved in lower motor neuron. Then the muscle neuromuscular junction or the nerve, sir. Now, if it is involved peripheral neuropathy, usually the distal muscles are involved. Over here, proximal muscles are involved. Then, neuromuscular junction there will be. Can you go to the so, summary and then first summarize and then come to that uh, your yeah, analysis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. People remember. Yes, sir. This summary: seven years old boy, second born to non-consanguineous marriage by. Full term vaginal delivery at home, belonging to class four Kuposami scale, with delay in motor milestones, not immunized from birth, with dietary deficiency deficiency of eleven percent in calories and adequate protein, was brought to OPD with complaints of difficulty in getting up from sitting position, difficulty in walking and climbing stairs from two years of age, and repeated falls from three years of age. With this, would like to consider the child is suffering from. Uh, anatomically, we can localize it to proximal muscles of the lower limb. Then, pathologically, mostly it is dystrophin deficiency that is causing with genetic etiology and functional impairment. Level three, we can tell. So, how do you rule out an anterior horn cell disease? So, anterior horn cell disease will be again pain can be there and fasciculation can be there. Then the one cell disease gave us to pain, is it? Well, fibrillation was it was an SMA. It was an SMA. Yes, suppose, sir. Uh, exactly. Suppose the spinal muscular atrophy. Where will the pain be? But fasciculation and fibrillation can be there. That is only on examination. Examination. Sir. To say that because the mother said there was no, it's like you know people asking about spasticity also. Tightness was not there, so there is no. No tightness. Yes. No, no, no. That mother may not know. Mother may not. The way spasticity is asked for is crossing his legs and those kind of questions. So what I'm saying is those are all really examination points. Over here, I mean, do you think you have enough information to you come to the pathological diagnosis? Pathological. I mean, suppose no, I'm saying I'm no, saying this is a, no, not I'm, I'm telling you one minute. You said that this is a patient in this lower socioeconomic group, and the patient has got dietary deficit and all this kind of thing, and maybe he's got uh, you know he's got a problem with his rickets. Yes, sir. possible. Okay, sir. I'm not possible. No, I'm just asking. I'm just saying. So the first thing is. I'm not saying it is the case. I'm just trying to tell you that with the in information which you gather from here is what you, you you said. Where is the problem? I would say generally, is it the proximal muscles only? Yes, sir. As of now, it looks proximal muscles, knees. No, but you so said there was a extent. problem of getting up from the uh, uh, ground. There was he takes, uh, you know. Problems of uh, his, uh, you, in your history, at least you said there was some uh, trunk uh, getting up from sitting. He had problems. The first symptom, in fact, you said, if I remember right, was he had difficulty in getting to sitting. Am I right? Yes, sir. So no, no, sir. From, from sitting to getting up, sir. Okay, but when you say you have delayed, let, okay, let's let's argue for the sake of this thing that you are saying it's proximal muscles. From your history, 
when do you start using the proximal muscles of the lower limbs when do you come to know that a person is having proximal muscle weakness so one is the so from the development when... history from the developmental history so according to you the proximal muscles of the limb are involved so climbing stairs upside up and down correct so that comes after one year no yes sir after one year it comes yes so, sir then over a year you have a lot of history before that no you said that the patient had difficulty holding his head he took 3 ma- for 7 months to hold his head instead of uh, sitting at 7 months he actually sat at 10 months uh, and then he had uh, then you said he st- stood up at about stood up means he was he had difficulty getting to standing but he was holding his supporting his weight in about one year one and a quarter by something of that sort so you are talking about you know before the time he stood up and could support his weight there was a lot of weakness because you are you're correlating the motor milestones with his problem later na no? you are right yes you are saying the onset is from birth and that's why he had muscle weakness causing him to have delayed milestones motor milestones from early life so that cannot be only of the limbs no? has to be of the trunk True, sir. Even yes. the trunk muscles, yes, sir. Exactly. So I would just say that it's a neuromuscular disorder when you have a problem of delay. Because we initially when you see this patient, you know, you want to find out is it a global delay or is it a specific delay? So how would yes. you, for example, a global delay would be if his uh, social and his you know other stuff was involved. His fine motor also was not involved, which tells you that it is. not you know most cerebral palsies and all that which also come with motor delay you very often they have fine motor problems also but sometimes they may not but generally neuromuscular disease affects the gross motor so you then come to the situation there is not a global delay it's a specific delay and in specific delay it's a gross motor delay so then you say okay this is a neuromuscular problem you don't come beyond that at the age of 2 years Okay. Yes, yes, sir. And and then you basically go to the next stage. That if it is a neuromuscular problem, is it muscle? Is it nerve? Which of course you mentioned to a bit. You said the distal muscles were less involved. And... Okay. How did you come to the diagnosis of dystrophin deficiency? Uh, that should have been included later, sir, in the diagnosis. No, but do you think there are any points against dystrophin deficiency? Because first of all, I mean, when does dystrophin deficiency present, sir? From three. I should to not four. say dystrophin deficiency. I should say um, uh, Duchenne and Becker's muscular dystrophy. Correct? Yes, sir. So when does that usually present? from around it starts at around one and a half to two years of age the early presentation with what with what with again delay in gross milestones no no, no with only no 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 they come with delay yes but the first year of life is generally normal yes sir correct yes you said the first year of life was not normal it was slow so here True, a very sir. early onset second thing is Usually, symptoms in DMD begin before the age of five, but they usually occur come to notice of parents, unless the parent is a doctor or something, by four or five years of age. Before yes. that, they are running a little slow. They are not uh, as fast as the other kids in school. Then, then they start say three, four, five years. That's the time toddler age group where you realize that something is wrong. Maybe four or five years away. Actually, that is the time when most parents come up with this, uh, this thing. Even that seems a little odd that you come to the diagnosis of that based on the history. I mean, I'm not trying to. You are probably right that it is the most common, and sometimes it can present early and all that kind of thing. You're right. I am saying, try to for the history when you give this, you know. What about you said neuro? You said this. You were excluding neuromuscular junction disorders, right? Yes, sir. Okay. There was no demonstrable fatigability, sir. That there was no history of that in the child, sir. On asking, so 
Hey, that's odd. What do you mean by fatigability in a child who's significantly weak as it is? Yes, I mean, not doing any much, repeated. Like how much could he walk before? Even with this, he could not. He should take a lot of effort to climb the stairs. Correct. He's yes, already sir. showing significant weakness. So to show more fatigue is going to be very difficult from the history, right? So, what is the important things which you say in your history, which argues against the diagnosis of a neuromuscular junction disorder? You talked about peripheral neuropathy, very good. You talked but about then muscle any disorder. involvement, ocular bulbar involvement. Correct. So, there, there, there is the main problem. Usually, they have myasthenias, not acquired so much congenital myasthenia because they started very early. So they usually have either ocular bulbar or they have respiratory. Yes, sir. And of course, they may also have weakness. That's of course there, but the other things are also very prominent. And you said there was nothing of that sort. In fact, the upper limbs were normal according to you. Correct? Yes, upper limbs were normal, sir. Okay, I think, Dr. Amrika, any more questions here before we go to the exam? Yeah, so, I thought uh, STMA would involve almost all the muscles uniformly. Absolutely. It has a selective muscle involvement. Same way the peripheral nerves uh, are not much involving proximal to start with. And therefore, we possibly come down to muscle, yes. But then the next Anterior thing is side. anatomy is muscle, but what is the pathology? What type of pathology are you expecting in this child? Muscle is being involved, sir. Any dystrophy, any abnormality in the muscle, we are suspecting sir at this stage either any structural abnormality or any functional abnormality in the muscles sir. so i thought you would say that it's a slowly worsening functional problem of a muscle so we'll call it a degenerative kind of a disease yes, whatever sir. the cause and then comes the possible etiology do you have any Obvious history of any increased bulk of muscles? Increased bulk of, yes, sir. In, on examination, there was uh, present, sir. Okay. Over here, mother didn't give any such history, sir. And I also could have asked, sir. I didn't ask it in the history. So why is he falling down often now? Um, buckling can take place, sir. If extensors of the knees also got involved. At a later stage, that could have led to repeated falls around standing. What is the usual mechanism in Duchenne's for falls? If you're thinking is Duchenne's, I mean, not be Duchenne's, but say. The why, do they knee, walk, why do they walk on their toes? The, the tendon of Achilles contracts. No, no, so, do they get contracted so early in life? I, around four to five years, they can yeah, get. I understand yes. that, but the fall started at two years, even earlier. No, sir, so fall was two years, uh, right? three to four years of age, mother told. So that got came on later, sir. Falls. Okay, so why do you get tendo Achilles tightness? That pseudo contracture of the this thing, sir. There'll be. Normal few of the muscle fibers will be normal, few of the muscle fibers will be abnormal, sir. So that contraction con normal and abnormal will lead to contractures. No, no, when you're walking on your toes, the usual reason is what that you may be having some weakness of your dorsiflexes, no, of your foot yes, sir. Extensors. Yes, sir. So you cannot raise your foot. So typically in Duchenne, what happens is the distal extensors of the ankle, that is tibia's anterior and all, are a little weak. They don't clear the ground as they should. When you're walking, always remember your foot is dorsiflexed. Yes, sir. Otherwise, your toes will hit the ground and you will trip. And because there's an unequal strength in the calf muscles, which are strong, compared to the... Remember, the calf muscles are plantar flexors, no? And the yes, sir. tiberius anterior and the dorsiflexes are basically weaker. So, because of that, you can't, and therefore, you don't clear the ground very well. And you, it's not a foot drop, but it's just that you don't clear the ground, especially uneven ground. So, that's another question you should have asked. 
this uneven ground you have to clear the how the even better and then usually because of a mild weakness of also the dorsiflexus is not just the proximal vastus okay all right so i think we have come to the point that this is a chronic slowly progressive uh, muscle disorder and or even anterior horn cell like you mentioned sir. yeah we are open at this point of time correct shall we look at the examination now yes sir uh, coming to general physical examination child is conscious cooperative oriented to time place and person is thin built uh, vitals were stable uh, anthropometry weight was less than minus 2 standard deviation is 96% stable sir 96% saturation at true mean sir uh -huh. I am asking. I am. I am a neurologist. So, would you accept that as a normal thing for a normal child? No, oh, it's yeah. okay. Yes, sir. Ninety-six percent. Yes, sir. Can consider saturation to be normal. I see. Okay. I mean, my feeling was that always in a young, healthy child, it should be ninety-eight, seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. That kind. Of Yes, sir. Close. Okay. Uh, weight was less than minus two standard deviation. Height was less than minus three standard deviation, and BMI was between minus two to minus three standard deviation. Head to toe examination on standing, he usually stands with wide base gait, and gait waddling gait was present. He used to sway to the opposite side, and toe walking was present. head appears normal face was normal eyes no uh, cataract was seen or no other abnormalities was seen dentition was normal tongue appeared large other nose neck and chest was normal arm deltoid contour was present bilaterally no visible upper muscles wasting was present but wasting of thigh muscles were present calf muscles appeared hypertrophied uh, no fasciculations or atrophy was seen on examination of the hand no flattening of tenar or hypotenar eminence was present genitals bilateral testicles were present palpable uh, spine no deformity was seen scapula bilateral scapula was at the same level so, cns examination higher mental function was almost normal sir then cranial nerve examination as well all the cranial nerve examination was normal Uh, motor which, system which cranial nerve in i mean examination is important in muscle disease or in uh, neuromuscular disorder generally seventh no sir facial no okay mm. and even the extraocular muscles sir yeah okay well also bulbar So, yes, bulbar muscles also, sir. Yes. Uh, motor system examination. Coming to the inspection, patient is examined in supine sitting and standing position as well. Attitude lying comfortably and on standing wide stance was present. Calf muscle globular mass was visible on bilateral calf. Uh, wasting of thigh muscles was seen, and there were restriction of movement of the ankle joints. Uh, on palpation, bulk. Uh, left and right was similar and thigh muscle was 20 cm on the right as well as left side tone was normal on both right and left upper limb as well as lower limb coming to the power neck flexors were weak so 3 by 5 extensors were 4 by 5 shoulders and the elbow of the the upper limbs were 4 by 5 marks so to 5 by 5 Coming to the lower limbs, hip. Sorry, extra... which muscles were weakest yeah. in the upper limbs? Sir, neck flexors were weak, sir. Okay. On examination. How do you do that? Sir, we asked the on making the child sleep in the so prone position, sir. Then ask the child to lift his uh, head, sir. That is for neck. in supine position uh 
we ask the child to raise the head off the table sir okay. then ask to apply the resistance in downward direction and then again to lift the child the lift the head off the bed sir okay so which is the earliest muscle which gets involved in dmd uh, flexors of the neck only gets involved sir that is actually the earliest sign so usually the anyway go on then then coming to the uh, hip muscles extensor muscles were weak sir 3 by 5 and 3 by 5 flexion abduction and adductors were also weak knee extensors and flexors were also weak sir 3 by 5 and 3 by 5 ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion was 4 by 5 and 4 by 5 and small muscles of the foot were normal sir in the Uh, uh so any questions you have or, uh yeah, so it looks like that the upper limbs are quite normal right yes yeah. sir upper limbs are normal so sir. this is localized to only lower limbs yes sir so why are we talking about a generalized muscle disorder sir Do you have any indirect evidence of an upper limb involvement as well? Indirect evidence: the power was low, sir. Not five by five; it was coming up to four by five, sir. So it might be getting involved at present state, sir. But or may not be also, right? Because yes, it's difficult sir. to be sure in a seven-year-old when you're examining and he's, he's much weaker than you are. So it's always yes. difficult to be sure. Four and five is, you know, like something. Now, did But, you say that the bulk of deltoid was uh, certainly large? No, sir. The counter was normal, sir. Deltoid counter was normal, sir. Calf Bulk was normal. Sir. Yes, sir. For hypertrophy. Did you did you look on the back for any possible evidence of even upper part of the body involved? So there was the child was very lean, sir. and he was thin built also so the uh, back scap both the scapula were prominent and even the spine was prominent sir but there was Have no you heard about the valley sign yes sir valley sign sir what is that sign uh, in uh, scapulo humeral this thing we get sir valley sign and vision also Prajesh, do you see this very often? Very often. In fact, I was very going to ask you a question yeah. that this is the yeah. Pradhan sign. Yeah, Pradhan sign, which basically was described by Sunil Pradhan from Sanjay Gandhi, and he showed that the only when you say the deltoid is normal and all that, usually hypertrophy is not only if it is a defect. Again, we have to clarify, clarify that if you are. For sure, it's a Duchenne dystrophy, which is very early. It has to be very severe. The pseudo hypertrophy or the hypertrophy of muscle is not only in the calf; it is in the deltoid, it is in the supraspinatus, it is in the infraspinatus. So those muscles are hypertrophic. They may look normal. Now maybe he was malnourished, therefore they looked normal to you. But okay. when you make them put their hands up like this, there's a valley between the deltoid and the Super spinatus and all that because of the uh, latissimus and all those things which are wasted. So certain muscles waste and certain muscles don't waste. In uh, certain muscles are hypertrophic in Duchenne, and it is you know not right to think it's only the calf muscles. The second point from your story, which is uh, is there anything against Duchenne in your in your in your because you have said dystrophinopathy quite. Uh, you know so is there anything against in your muscle power so even the proximal muscles of upper limb as well would have been involved sir should have been involved it no no they don't get involved so early they come up later so in fact your muscle power in the upper limb is well explained by duchens in fact the only muscle which might be slightly weak is biceps deltoid and everything is very strong Similarly, in the low limb, in the low limb, because you are given equal everywhere, equal. So, in the let's go to the lower limb, please. Yes, sir. 
everything is three, 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 three. But that's not what you expect. In Duchenne's, what is the difference between a muscle disease, a general myopathy, or even spinal muscular atrophy, which is a different uh, uh, location of the disease, anterior onset? What is the distribution of weakness in dystrophies? This is something it very important. Which you must proportionate, sir. Huh? It will be disproportionate, sir. Correct. Yes, so in sir. the hip, for example, what is stronger? Extension or flexion? Extension, sir. No, flexion. flexion, flexion. Huh. In the knee, what is, it? what is stronger? Extension or flexion? In the knee extension, sir. No, flexion. Quadriceps are gone. Quadriceps are gone. Quadriceps are weak. Glutea are weak. That's why you waddle, la. Yes, the sir. Glutea are weak, so the, usually the gluteus medius, which also stabilizes the pelvis when you're walking, that is weak. So you sway. Normally when you walk, na, the opposite gluteus medius keeps the hip up. So if that is not, if it's weak, then your it'll waddle, go up and down like your like a duck. Then abduction, adduction. So what is weaker? Adduction. Adduction. Correct. Yes, and what is weaker at the ankle? I told Dorsi you before, flexion. Dorsi flexion. Plantar, yeah. yes. plantar flexion is strong. In fact, that's why it remains in that, con that's where the contractures occur over time. So when you have this, everything equal, in fact, spinal muscular atrophy becomes a consideration, except that they usually don't have distal muscles such a weakness that you get a co contracture so early. Usually they get contractures and, you know, and other other proximal muscles. So they are more proximal than distal. But your 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 thing is, you know, like there is a difference, but it's not disproportionate. So it could be congenital, some other myopathy also. There are many yes. other myopathies where you can get hypertrophy of muscles. So I won't go into that. I'll be too much to discuss in this group. But basically, there's not the only thing. Uh, your distribution of a dystrophy is usually disproportionate involvement of agonist and antagonist. Is yes, the spine sir. all right? Is the spine all right? Yes, sir. There was no deformity of, there was no scoliosis and all, sir. Spine was all right. So there sir. was no lordosis. Uh, so spine position, position was fine, sir. No, okay. no. look, Lord, he's very correct. Lordosis is almost always there in any patient who has muscle disease. Significant proximal weakness because, in fact, I thought lordosis is the first possible sign to pick up at two years of age, correct. maybe even before any other symptoms could come up. Correct, absolutely correct. Yes. Okay, go ahead further on neurological examination. The superficial reflexes were normal, sir. Deep tendon reflexes, uh. Ankle reflex was 2 plus. The rest of them were slightly diminished, sir. 1 plus was we are getting. So, how do you explain that? Uh, in Again, sir, in the muscular dystrophy, more usually ankle reflex no, 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 no. later on inwards. Let, let, let's, let's just go back. What is reflexes dependent upon? So, the stretch reflex. No, no, no. The sensory arc. Or the yes, sir. afferent arc yes, sir. and the efferent arc. Yes, sir. Correct? So, yes, sir. if you have diffuse hyporeflexia, so biceps, triceps, supinated knee, everything is down. And knee is, I mean, it is difficult to explain. If it's a afferent arc, suppose a sensory nerve is involved, over here there is no evidence of that, then you can get absent reflexes, yes, or depressed reflexes. But then the ankle has to go. Almost always go. So that is not the question. It has to be efferent arc. So if it's an efferent arc, which because of muscle weakness, because of problem, which is the most important condition where you get absent jerks? Absent jerks. Is absent or depressed all over? Element type of which one? Region. Which one? Element no you know that we know. Which is the there are five elements now. Nah? We're talking about uh, anterior horn cell, root. Um, uh, nerve, neuromuscular the junction, and muscle. Anterior horn cells, sir. So anterior horn cells, correct? Yes, sir. You mean anterior horn cells, why should you get ankle jerk normal? 
So this is a little difficult to explain. What happens in muscle disease? What does the muscle disease depend upon? So which muscles have depressed reflexes and which muscles have normal reflexes? Muscle, proximal muscles will have no, depressed. Weak muscles have depressed reflexes. Yes, sir. So the weak muscle in the body at this age, where you found the upper limbs to be virtually normal, the jerk should have been present. The knee jerk is usually absent or reduced because the quadriceps are weak. But the ankle jerk is very often present till very late because the calf muscles are stronger. You understand? Yes, yes sir. So this is a little difficult to explain. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe he was not cooperating, and you know, it's difficult to get. So you should be careful with you say this. Yes, sir. Okay. Sensory system was normal. Cortical sensation was normal, sir. Cerebral nervous yeah. system was also normal. So gait, I have the video, sir. Can I play the video please, of the gait? Please, please. Yes, sir. Have you optimized the zoom for video? Have you lost the connection? So you stop sharing, you share again, and you just put optimized video for zoom. Uh, the the scarves are prominent. What do you think, sir? I mean, I can't see the calves very well, unfortunately. <laughs> Anyway. So what does this mean? Gawa sign means what? Does it help differentiate the different disorders? I think he's lost the connection. Yes, so now am I audible, sir? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. So, Gorsen is usually seen in Duchenne or Becker's uh, muscular dystrophy, sir. It's not seen in other proximal muscle weakness, for example, spinal muscular atrophy. It will be seen, no? Yes, so it can be seen. So any proximal muscle exactly. So it doesn't really help you. I mean, of course, there's a way of if you can analyze the the way the child gets up in Duchenne is a little different, but that's very hard to differentiate on a clinical basis. Otherwise, Gower sign is just a sign of weakness of the proximal and truncal muscles and all that, basically hip muscles and stuff. Okay. Does the yes. contractures in the TA help you differentiate between spinal muscular atrophy and muscular dystrophy? So, contractures develop late, sir. No, you're right, but contractures go because the, the, the foot is flat in spinal muscular atrophy. Final, yes, a flat foot will be present, sir. Yeah, Wasting well, of extensive yeah, in, the, in the Duchenne, the slightly toe walking occurs, no? like you mentioned. So, yes, they go on their toes, and those guys are flat. Okay. So, now how, how are you going to confirm this diagnosis? So, diagnosis can be confirmed by further. Uh, Investigations, sir. Lab investigations, we can do uh, creatine kinase levels, sir. Creatine kinase levels will be usually raised in muscular problems, sir. Then electromyography can be done, sir. No, in this case, what would you do? In this case, so creatine. 
uh, no sir he was he had come on opd basis sir so okay but what do you expect the ck level to be it will be raised sir so oh, raised what 300 500 10000 5000 it's a it will be around 10 to more than 10 to 20000 correct 20000 yes sir when Normal. is it highest when is it highest and when is it lowest uh don't know sir okay so it's the highest actually at birth when you know and uh, it may be 100000 that kind of figures and then okay. over time it goes down by the time you become wheelchair dependent it goes into the hundreds so that's the thing so it's a, you know starts off in prenatal life in the past uh, i don't know if uh, dr amdekar remembers we used to do fetal blood sampling because there was no genetics to check ck levels in patients yes so we can use it for screening in the past we now of course we don't use that it's a very oh, not a good technique at all because you can cause abortions but in prenatal also you could diagnose duchenne by doing pre fetal blood sampling and checking the ck okay so then then electromyography can be done and then so would you do it so would you do it? So the ck was say, say 5000 would you do the electromyography don't know sir why would you do it is almost already confirmative of uh, race no, but you uh, when you are sick which other condition except muscular dystrophy or uh, we give rise to a very high ck suppose your ck is 300 400 then you are not sure because it may be either a muscle disease can anterior horn cell disease give rise to high ck uh, no sir other things like uh, Actually, no, actually, actually, no. Actually, anterior horn cell disease. No, actually, spinal muscular atrophy can give rise to a slightly high CK, three hundred, four hundred, that kind of thing. Other muscle diseases like myopathy, structural myopathy, they also can give rise to a slightly high CK. So, CK. So, if you have a slightly high, you can't tell. But if it's in the thousands, you don't need to do EMG. Okay. Sir. then finally confirmative will be uh, pcr sir for dystrophy in gene genetic studies will be confirmative sir yeah so how are you going to manage now so one is uh, the pre- preventing the disability sir so physiotherapy can be given sir other one is the nutritional status of the child can be improved then corticosteroids also can be tried sir then prevention of the complication any cardiac complication and the respiratory depression and recurrent pulmonary infections all those things have to be treated sir okay which is what do you say about all these drugs are they worth trying uh, or or you just the, leave them alone uh well uh, let's see what he said what what is physiotherapy basically going to do what he said it will just delay the contractures that Correct. is going to so only contractures so. and contractures reduction to make sure he doesn't get a tight ta he doesn't get a tight uh, tensor fascia lata so he doesn't walk you know very wide base because uh, abductors are tight those kind of things yes night splints are used what about exercise so part of physiotherapy only so what kind of exercise would you ask somebody with a muscle disease what kind of it is very effective physiotherapy and exercise that is we should avoid excessive correct so mod- moderate exercise is okay but which is the yes. best exercise something which does not which allows you to move your legs without water so swimming aquatic therapy all those kind of things if you can start okay. swimming it's very nice and third are basically important things vitamin d these children usually are deficient that will add 
to the problem. So you have to give vitamin D supplementation. Now the thing about corticosteroids, I always give them primarily because it delays the. I mean, it's well, well. Now it's well established since the early 90s that corticosteroids are given in low doses. They're not high doses. They are supposed to give prednisolone is about 0.75 milligram per kilo. And there are different regimens. You can give 10 days on, 20 days off at the beginning, or 20 days on, 10 days off. And then when you go on to daily, as if the as the child worsens. For two, three years, four years, you might mean stabilize his progression. And uh, I think that is worth it. But of course, you have to, therefore, you worsen the bone density. So you have to, again, look after his vitamin D. You, have to, you may have to do bone MBM or DEXA scan, you know, MBM or bone mineral densitometry. You may have to give those. I mean, nowadays, people are giving a lot of, to prevent fractures, they're giving that oh, biphosphonates, you know, yes, alindronate and all. And of course, then, then you look after, look for the heart problem. Also, yeah. besides this, corticosteroids also help the future. So in the future, for example, there's well good enough evidence that in the Duchenne dystrophy, the heart condition is also reduced. You know, the heart problem, cardiomyopathy, which comes up in the second decade usually, or first, late first decade. And then also the spine, the scoliosis, which occurs, is also reduced. The respiratory function is better. Only problem is a lot, a lot of side effects, growth failure, you know, some bit of obesity. All I've things. always wondered how steroids help in this child. There is no inflammation, no yeah, immunological but, inflammation. Yeah. And then would steroids not add on to muscle weakness? I agree with you, sir. But the problem is this is, I mean, it's done so many trials have been done that even in the new genetic therapy trials, which we have now so many coming up, and of course, none of them are affordable in India, but still everybody is insisting on steroids, even in those patients before they start the trial. So steroids have been, I think, established in many ways. The only thing they haven't established is whether intermittent steroids are as good as daily steroids. But generally, we feel, I mean, that you know, you start at least by four or five when the symptoms come. And then you give initially, you know, we just do the Gower's time. I mean, that is what we do, that's all. Or you can do the six-minute walk test. You make them get up from the floor and you time him. And you see approximately whether he's going downhill or not. And then if he's going down there in front of your eyes, then you sort of, you can go to daily steroids and all those kind of things. But the thing is to try and maximize and function as much as possible. And finally, when the heart disease comes, which is going to come, to delay it or at least help it, people are using ACE inhibitors, losartan, and other things. They're using beta blockers. So, so there are things. other two children in the family, right? Yeah, Younger that ones. is the most important. So management. what are you doing for them? Yes, yes. That is yes. the most important part of the management. I was going to come back to your genetic, go to your family history. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what are we planning for them? So, family history, we can keep them informed that it is positive. No, no, over positive here, how, how, what would you do next in this patient? Screening, sir. Who, who will you screen? Arm. So, creatine kinase can be used, sir, but not the girl child, the boy child. Okay. What else will you do? The, any genetic test you want to do? Suppose you do a genetic test on the child and you have confirmity DMD. Who else should be tested? Besides, you do the CK and the boy, the brother, he's normal. So he doesn't yes. need So the maternal side. So what would you do? So you have not completed the family history. The three generation family history should be taken. No, all the girl, all the women. For example, we don't know how many sisters this mother has. We yes, don't know sir. how many boys she has. How many of them are also have girls? Because if it is a familial thing, if you go on, you, you can have it in the family also. No? So you yes, have sir. to test. 
So the best thing is you can genetically test the mother. So once you yes, test sir. the mother, you can find out if it's a sporadic problem or is a genetic, I mean, inherited problem. If it is the carrier state is detected, then the sister has to be checked for carrier state. The mother's sisters have to be checked. The mother, you know. Mm-hmm. Mother, she things. actually has two other sisters. Sir. Correct. So they have to be tested, yes. especially if they're unmarried. You know, lots of yes. things. Prevention is the most important thing in DM. I was going to come to that. Dr. Amdekar, agree with you absolutely. That is the one thing people are forgetting. Yes, sir. So the mother's side, she has two other sisters and each of them have one sister has three kids and the other. Can't hear him. Hello. And what is the what is the prognosis? So can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So the uh, mother side that one is sir. They know none of them were affected. Two sisters she had, of which first sister had four kids and second sister had two kids, sir. And they were all they were all older also, sir. And as of now, everyone was more than 15 to 20 years. But it's still worth doing it for only one person who still not got a child. And that's a sister who's six years old now. Yes, sir. You have to do yes, the sir. carrier status of the mother. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dr. Amdekar is asking you, what do you think is the prognosis of this child? What do the, you want to tell the parents what or what to expect? Prognosis is poor only, sir. Since he's going to become ambulatory in other two to three years, he'll be ambulatory. So we'll have to explain the parents. Non, non-ambulatory. Yes, sorry, sorry. Huh? Non-ambulatory will be in other two to three years. So we'll have to explain, counsel the parents regarding the same regarding the poor prognosis in this child, but it can be prevented in the future generation. That also can be explained, sir. Both counseling has to be done. One is for the present child, one is for the future generation to come. Both can be done, sir, counseling. Would you would you counsel the parents? Show us how do you exactly tell them in a layman's language? In layman's language, one is pre- pre- about this child, sir. About this child, you tell the parents that this disease is going to progress. No, no, you, so- you assume that uh, Dr. Amdekar and I, myself are parents. You please tell us now. <laughs> you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How will so, you explain? I want to know. Na? Huh, you sir, want to speak so, in Hindi also, it's fine. Hey, no, sir. Hindi, I'm very poor at it. Sir. Okay, English, English. <laughs> So, if you are the parents, then about the present child, this uh, seven-year-old child which you are having, this child is soon going to become not, will not be able, this disease is going to progress and soon he will not be able to walk. And I'll explain about the complications also, sir, which can be prevented. Like he can have certain heart problems. So, I'll explain what the heart problem is about the breathlessness, all those things. Then he can have respiratory problems about the respiratory depression part, I'll explain. Then I'll explain that what is the importance of physiotherapy in this child. So regular physiotherapy and regular exercises have to be taught so that we can delay the progression of the illness, what is being present in this child. And the poor pro at by around 15 years of life, the chance of survival is very less in your child, is what I'm going to tell, sir. Then further prevention of the... When, I, when are you going to tell? Sir? When are you going to tell? So when they... In the sense, sir, now when they come for the OPD visit about this disease, we can tell them, sir. Them already after, also. after confirming... After ruling out all the reversible causes, if they are present, then we can counsel, sir. You think you? I mean, oh, but I'm like, I mean, you want to comment on what? Uh, I it? think counseling is not very easy. But remember two things: that what is the difference between communication and counseling? You did communicate with them to say what is this, and you will get worse, etc. Counseling is to kind of help them face this situation. Correct. Now, how do you do that? 
so you tell them that uh, your child has a problem right from birth which is of nobody blame and it happens sometimes in some families and it is likely therefore that some muscles in your child are weak now we have started some management some physiotherapy some drugs and let's see over the next 3 months how the child improves it may take a long time but we will only know the progress of the disease over some time well there are at time a uh, very little progress or sometimes there could be very slow or even no progress but let's start working on it let's do all this and then every 3 months you come back to me and i will assess whether there is any improvement meanwhile what you said about nutrition all that should be done the point is you don't tell them point blank that you will die in the second year or second decade of life and all that in i the remember first, in the first visit they'll never come back to you again and i think this is very yes. important that yeah, one of the yeah. dnb exam when i was an examiner a candidate was counseling a parent of a down child and he went up to saying that there could be atlantoacusal dislocation and a sudden death and he may develop leukemia and all that <laughs> now these are these are not required so see they will understand gradually the things are worsening you need to prepare them for the inevitable end but not give them a shock and keep them with some hope but don't say that oh he will do well etc but certainly they will understand over time has to be done over few not one visit over one year i think That's why I asked you. We do it all in the first visit. The first yes. visit, tell them that you are going to stop. You are going to die at fifteen. You are going to be on wheelchair by ten. You know, I mean, that will be it will be devastating for anybody. So you have to hold their hand in there. There has to be empathy. You have to understand that you have to be in their shoes, and they haven't. They have come to you for something which you they thought they will get some medicine, and tomorrow morning he'll be fine, or in a few weeks he'll be fine. And over here, you are telling them all this in the first visit. It will be ex- extremely traumatic psychologically. So you have to be very. I would do exactly the same as Dr. Amdekar said. Just over time, they realize. And I would also say that if they are more educated than I, maybe these people were not. You should, uh, you know, ask them to get educated over the net and all that. That's also something which over time, so that they can read. Of course, not the first visit over time. Yes. Are there any other question from any other attendees? Please. Sir, uh, one of the question was how do we localize the low element lesion, sir? Now what we have got to neuromuscular junction, muscle, antiocell, and peripheral nerves. Mm-hmm. i think we have already said to begin with that first it's a neurological disease then we came to low motor neuron lesion then we came to the we discussed every possibility but we kept even a spinal muscular atrophy on card and subsequently also on examination i think there were few discrepancies uh, which were not expected in a typical dushen so pradesh please yeah so i think generally um, most anterior horn i mean there is a very old dictum in neurology anterior horn cells waste uh, 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 roots pain nerves tingle and muscles are weak now of course this is obviously is too simplified because you get wasting in many others also but essentially suppose we look at each Let's look at power. One is power is usually proximal in muscle disease and anterior horn cell disease. Usually distal in um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, peripheral nerve. Peripheral and, neuropathy. And usually o- o- cranial muscles more affected than limb muscles in 
neuromuscular junction disorder. Of course, there are lots of exceptions to every rule, huh? please. Second thing is bilaterality and unilaterality. Roots, usually pain because, for example, the most common root disorder is which one? Which affects roots and nerves, which you see all the time. GBS. GBS, huh? Correct. It affects the, you can get proximal muscle weakness also in GBS, but they usually have pain. Pain is an important symptom in roots because usually chronic root disorders, you know, for example, this doesn't occur very common in children, but for example, adults may have a slip disc or something and they may have, you know, sciatica and all those kind of things. So roots pain, usually they may be unilateral, but it can be bilateral like in GBS. And uh, they are usually, the power is certain segments are involved. So suppose your S1 root is involved, you'll have plantar flexor weakness. If your L4, 5, L5 uh, root is involved, you'll have dorsiflexor weakness and those kind of things. So you'll have segmental weakness. Then, um, uh, coming to uh, reflexes, hypotonia, usually anterior horn cells are hypotonic. Muscle disease, which are severe, are also hypotonic. For example, all the congenital muscle diseases, congenital myopathies and all, they're usually hypotonic. They're part of the floppy baby syndrome. Um, well, you know, so it's this, over here you said the tone was normal. It's a little odd, but I suppose if it's uh, maybe, you know, it can be a little normal in the early parts of tuition. But from your story and from the video you showed, it was quite a late story. So, and then the tone is, of course, reduced in all of them, but least in neuromuscular junction disorders. And uh, fourth thing is uh, uh, contractures. So contractures, early contractures, especially those, I'm not talking of Duchenne now. I'm not, I'm talking of uh, all muscle disease. Contractures occur early in the congenital disorders. Uh, spinal muscular atrophy also contractures occur a little later, not early. Duchenne, of course, it occurs much later. But so it depends on the disease. So contractures usually mean these two. But any muscle will have five, any with, with if there's differential weakness, muscles will have contractures. And finally, reflexes. So reflexes are typically in the neuromuscular junction disorders, very often they are normal or minimally affected. In the uh, muscle disease, the weak muscles, like I already said will show depression of reflexes. So, for example, a congenital muscular dystrophy or a congenital muscle disease, everything may be gone because everything is weak. But in a Duchenne muscular dystrophy, the knee jerk is initially gone and the rest go later. And uh, uh, nerve disease, because there may be a mixed kind of nerve disease, so could be neuropathy affecting the sensory or the distal, on the efferent arc, sensory arc or the motor arc, reflexes go early, sometimes even before the weakness. Same with anterior horn cells. So, neurogenic lesions, the reflexes are lost early. Muscle and neuromuscular junction are lost later, depending on how much weakness there is. If the weakness is there, profound weakness, a lot of weakness earlier on, they will be absent even at that time. Finally, I think... Certain muscles are more involved in muscle disease. For example, as uh, Akshay, Ashray, sorry, said, clearly there is a neck weakness quite early in muscle disease. So they, one of those signs which I use is, you know, even an anterior horn cell can happen. For example, spinal muscular atrophy. Suppose you have a floppy baby, you put him on his prone, he will not be able to lift his head only. You know? Similarly, if you have significant weakness, muscle disease coming, they will not be able, their usual flexor weakness is more. So they have a problem in, they usually turn and get up. So Gower's sign is when you're sitting to standing, turning and getting up is showing truncal weakness. And neck muscle weakness is like he said, you try and ask him to lift the head up, but he can't do it. Or there's a head lag. So all these are neck muscles, trunkal muscles are more involved in 
uh, muscle disease sometimes bulbar so dysphagia usually is a nerve problem you know but sometimes it can occur in muscle disease it is not common respiratory muscles again much more common in myasthenia can be seen late can be seen in muscle disease muscular uh, spinal muscular atrophy especially the very severe forms the peripheral nerve is unusual to have significant except for acute peripheral nerve like gbs so otherwise chronic for example chronic you know shako mari tooth and all that they don't have respiratory muscle so these are some of the signs and symptoms which you should ask for when you are approaching in your muscle next doubt was what about the new emerging therapy sir like gene therapy i think so they are trying to ask for sir well <laughs> that's a huge topic but basically the principles are what that the two main therapies which are coming in which are one has already been around for about 5 6 years that's called exon skipping and in that what happens is uh, if you see the gene dystrophin gene is a long gene big gene certain exons are deleted no so they are not there only and that's why the dystrophin cannot be made so what you do is you use uh, what are called uh, uh, exon skipping you use oligonucleotides which are antisense which prevent which allow some protein to be made and the other one is of course the newest thing is this gene therapy which is basically you trying to it is very difficult to insert the gene so far because the vectors which you use the viral vectors you know this uh, adenovirus vectors where you put the gene and then you send it inside the give the person and all that the, as as it is very large dystrophin gene you no know, my vector will you take that much so what they do is they now they're doing this micro uh, uh, gene where they're putting small small amounts of the dna inside but all this is for india it's going to be maybe 20 years 30 years before it comes here, i think the cost of uh, these therapies is is not is not possible i think unless you're ambani or adani i don't think you can afford this they all uh, run into crores of rupees per year forever to make a disease which is severe mild so i think it's a pipe dream to think about these therapies right now what i think that's why i use steroids vitamin d therapy swimming and always give a positive outlook to your patients this is a very difficult disease to work with you know you're seeing your own child go downhill and if you don't have empathy with this patient's father and mother you may hold their hand through their crisis that's one of the things we don't do okay sir any other doubts participants please feel free to ask uh that's all uh, the doubts i think so sir okay sir okay sir. uh there are no doubts on youtube also sir uh, so so thank you so much sir amdekar sir and rajesh sir thank for you. thank you so much for inviting us thank you thank yes, you sir. very much thank okay. you for yes sir okay. we we'll look forward to have many more such sessions also sir sure sure okay. thank you Thank you, Rajesh. Bye, bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It was indeed a very comprehensive clinical class, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, dear mentors, uh, Professor Y K M Dekar, sir, and uh, Rajesh, sir, uh, for the wonderful discussion and explanation. We could learn a lot because of the detailed explanation, sir. Thank you so much for your valuable input, sir. And I thank uh, uh, Dr. Ashray for the great presentation. I thank all the participants for their active participation. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.